hi everyone. Um, I have some sad news. It looks like we are not streaming to Facebook today. Um, I just get a message. So welcome. I'm back with our regular um, live streaming. If you are new to my live stream, uh, my name is Hani. I'm a food blogger and also self-taught cookie decorator. I have a blog, hanielas.com, and uh, there is a ticker running on the bottom there. And that's where I share all my sweet and savory recipes. And every Wednesday, I go live here on YouTube and also on Facebook. But Facebook is, we're not friends today. So it's not streaming to Facebook for some reason. So thank you for joining in. Let's see who is here today. Hi, Darlene. I can't wait to share your projects. I am absolutely obsessed. Thank you for sending me the pictures. Hi, June. Hello, hello. How is it going? How is the weather? I know last time we, we uh, messaged it was snowing, so I hope uh, it improved. Hi, Sally. It is great to be back as well. So I'm so happy to be here. Hi, Char hi. hi Charlene. How was the doctor's appointment? Thank you for joining in. Hi, Jeremy. Hello, hello. Hi, Jen to Alabama. Hi, Linda. Thank you for sending me that uh, picture last uh, last minute. I I think I was able to upload it, so I will be able to share it. Thank you for that. Hello, hello, Gilbert and Teresa. Thanks for joining in. Hi, Brenda. Oh, it's sunny and warm, South Carolina. Excellent. It's a bit chilly here uh, in Spain. It uh, cooled down a bit, but we are expecting some warm weather weather on Friday. So hopefully over the weekend, it will be uh, nice again. Hello, Colleen. Hello to Ohio, Caroline. Hello, hello, welcome. Oh, you made macarons. Hard and little envelope transfers. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, send me the picture. I'd love to see those. So today, guys, we are making, I don't know if you are aware, but this year it's a leap year, and today is February 28th, and tomorrow is 29th. So this only happens every four years. Last time it was 2020. I think nobody was noticing because we were uh, having other issues, right, with with the pandemic. Yeah, I know. I know, Karen. Um, it's out of my hands, really. I just got a notification that it's not working, and it's due to some Facebook. It's on a, a issue. It's on the Facebook's end, so. Um, not not surprising, but thank you for um, joining in on YouTube. Um, I will double check again with my streaming service if if there is something we can do to improve this, so it doesn't happen as often. Hi, Karen. Oh no, it is you, Barakli. So it's the same Karen. <laughs> I'm glad that you could be here. So good to see you. Hi, Gloria. All right, so uh, today we are going to do birthday cookies because I felt like, I don't know if we have anyone on the call who is celebrating on uh, February 29th, but I thought it would be really nice to do that. And um, I also prepared uh, my uh, PDF that is available in the coffee shop. And as you guys, if you are... Um, um, if you've been watching my live stream, you know that this PDF, it's a free PDF, you can download it. And there are all different um, links to different uh, tools that I will be using in today's tutorial. There is also a link to the transfer sheet uh, with the birthday uh, images that I will be using today. And also um, I see that I put a recipe for royal icing there that links to my blog. And also those of you who are on Pinterest, don't forget to follow me on Pinterest where I also um, share different uh, recipes and also tutorials and my inspiration in my cookie inspiration board. So uh, you can find a lot of different inspiration there. A link to the coffee shop. I'm going to grab that link right now. Uh, or actually, I will just grab a link to the newsletter so that's easier. And I will pop it into a comment. Section. Yes, I forgot to mention, mention. thank you. Um, those of you who are on the Patreon, um, uh, second, third, and fourth tier, you, you, um, I think they are, or they already published them, right? Um, um, there are the templates for today's live are, are already there, so you don't need to purchase them if you are the member of Patreon. If you, you would like to sign up for the Patreon, there is also another link. I have so many links, but a lot of the links are already in the PDF. Okay. 
All right, one more link, I promise, and then I will be done for a while. <laughs> Maybe five minutes. All right, so today we are going to make uh, birthday cookies. All right, so let's bring up this image here. So um, we're going to be making cookies on the right, or some of, I mean, the colors are slightly different. Well, some of them are the same, but some of them are slightly different, but the idea is the same. The image that is on the left, I just wanted to illustrate the transfers, that um, transfer sheets that are available in the shop. So there is a a balloon transfer sheet and also uh, like a fake candle there are also cake transfer sheets that you can use and um, also very narrow candles and uh, yeah i think that's it and then also a cupcake so um there is a nice it's a nice set that you can use not just for birthday but you can use it for other occasions i think as well okay so that's in the um in the um, coffee shop and that's the template um, all right. Uh, yes, thank you there on a Patreon. You uh, thank you so much. I forget I did so many things today, so I forget what the... <laughs> I don't know if you follow me uh, on that, but I totally forgot what I did today. All right. Um, so those are the cookies. I also wanted to mention that today I released a new tutorial on the Patreon for the third for the fourth year, my my three D cookie wizard uh, tier, and. Um, Believe it or not, I made this little birdhouse last year, and this year the vintage piping is all the rage, so I decided to include it in the Patreon, and the tutorial with a narrated video, it's available there. All right. And if you have any questions during the live stream, just pop them in the comment section, and I will get to them um, as soon as possible. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, so let let me bring up my uh, my camera first. I want to show you the cookies that we'll be making. All right, let's do a camera dance. All right, so instead of a traditional shapes, um, don't mind the last dust. I spilled some on the cookie. Um, I decided to use a round cookie because that's something that everybody has. Let me zoom in, and you probably guessed. You can probably guess how I constructed this shape, right? So I'm gonna turn it over. I also baked it on a perforated mat, hence the lovely texture. And what I did, I cut out uh, three rounds, and then I used the same cutter and I trimmed some of it, and then I basically just glued these together. I didn't use any water for the adhesive, but if you are concerned that the cookie dough is not going to stick, uh, you can use just a little bit of water. Don't, don't use excessive amounts, because it can uh, mess up the, the cookie dough. Thank you, Darlene. I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, so that's how I constructed this shape. And the other cookie, the round cookie, it's just, a, I mean, obviously it's just a round cookie, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started, get started with the first thing, and that is, okay, let me remove this screen and I have to adjust something here, all right. So let's do the cupcakes first, and these are transfers, and I already have some here in front of me, so I'm going to show you what they look like <clears throat> here. And this is not sped up. This is a recorded video of me, and it's not sped up at all, so this is how um, I would work in real, real time. Maybe slightly faster because it is recording, so I have to be mindful where my hands are, and I have to keep my, my template a little further from me, so I am maybe a little slower than, than usual, but this is the speed. And I'm using about 15 to 20 second consistency for the liners. Then we're gonna let these crust maybe um, 20 minutes or so. And then um, we can add the, the liner design. So for that, I'm using white icing. I'm outlining first. And for this, you can use like a 20 second consistency. These lines are super fine. So, um, and if you have to make a lot of these using thicker consistency icing, um, it may cause some, you know, you, you may get uh, fatigue easily. So I'm using about 20 seconds or around there. And then um, I'm just going to add a few more lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Margaret. Happy birthday. Yay. That's exciting. I'm so happy that somebody's birthday is today because we are making uh, birthday cookies. Happy birthday. Okay, let me see if I can... Um, Happy birthday. <laughs> I put a ticket for you. So once it dries, um, we can just remove it. Uh, very easy to do from the acetate and you can store them pretty much indefinitely um, and unless you expose them to um, water or um, you know, like moisture will obviously um, 
destroy your transfers, or if you expose them to direct sunlight, they tend to fade. Um, so the color is not going to be as bright. All right, so let me uh, let me remove this so I can show you. Okay. That is so exciting. Happy birthday, Margaret. All right, so um, that's the first transfer. I already have some here. I'm gonna be uh, sharing the pictures with you um, in a minute. And now let's bring the candles. So the template that you see on the screen, it's not what you're getting. It was something I was playing, playing around uh, a few months ago and I just ended up using the same template for the candles. So there are two sizes for the candles and um, you can use larger candles on the cookies we are working today or also on a cupcake that works really well. And you can also use this shape for a cake, although I did put a slightly wider um, cake template in the transfer sheet uh, bundle. Thank you, June. Thank you. And thank you, Marika20. So for the narrow, I really love the narrow ones. So for those, I'm using blue icing. And all of this icing is about 20 second consistency or around there. And when you're making these narrow ones, make sure that the opening on your piping bag is uh, it, it's small. Otherwise, when you're trying to get do the corners, it's a bit difficult if your piping bag um, has a large opening. And to color icing, I just used royal blue for this nice, lovely color. And the yellow, it's um, uh, very strong. I, I feel like Emery Color Brand Lemon Yellow, it's super strong lemon yellow. So you only need like a drop or so and you get a really nice vibrant yellow. You can, I think, even do uh, make um, neon neon yellow with, with their food coloring if you add a few more drops. It's very, very concentrated. And I am piping on an acetate. You, you don't see parchment here. So what I did, I put my template inside of a protector sheet. Make sure that you get a smooth protector sheet. Not they, they sell the, sometimes you will find textured, um, uh, textured protector sheets, but don't get those. Just get the smooth ones, and then you can um, insert your template in there and pipe directly onto the acetate. Now I'm making the cake. So I made um, purple and the yellow cake. I have them also here on my acetate, so you will see me removing them as well in, in real, real time. <clears throat> So how is everyone? Let me tell me how are you? How are you guys? Are you guys? Uh, I mean, Easter is coming up. Are you guys uh, making any Easter plans? And uh, let me know in the comment section. And those of you who are new to uh, the live stream and uh, my YouTube channel, don't forget to uh, subscribe and follow Haniela's everywhere you can: <laughs> Instagram, Pinterest, and uh, Facebook and YouTube. And now, once the candles crossed, you can add details. Now these can be added now, or you can add them later. I'm adding the yellow details now. I did add the blue, white, white stripes across the blue ones, but those you could actually add later as well. Um, I added the yellow ones because we're gonna be painting the candles with gold luster dust that I'm not happy about because I bought a different um, kind. It's not the one that I really am um, in love with. So um, it's a bit uh, like old gold. But it, it is nice, but it's not as lustrous as I would have liked. You'll see in a second. So now I'm just adding, and again, for this, you can use 20 second consistency, just pipe these lines across. They're very, very small. Yes, Carolyn, these are all in the coffee shop, but if you are a member of Patreon, um, if you are in a tier, um, second tier, third and fourth tier, they're already in the Patreon group and you can download them there. There are also JPEGs, so if you need to resize them maybe to, to um, accommodate your project, if you need them to be slightly bigger or smaller, you can um, do that with a JPEG. Otherwise, there is a whole PDF. Oh, thank you so much, Jeremy, that you worked really hard so you could clear your schedule. Thank you for clearing your schedule for us here today. Oh, you're so tired. Maybe you can uh, just close your eyes and just uh, like try to relax. But thank you for being here. So to make the um, garland, you, you, you saw me, I divided the top of the transfer. The transfer is dry at this point. I divided the, the transfer with a scribe tool. So I started in the middle and then I divided the halves in, in half. So I had like even, 
even section so I knew where to pipe the icing. And you can see this is that old gold that I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, if you're not in Patreon, Patreon is a subscription. Let me pause this. Um, Patreon is a subscription um, platform where I share it's, uh, I share exclusive tutorials for the patrons. There are different tiers. So I, I think you would know. You would probably know because it's a monthly charge. So uh, you would probably know that if you are in Patreon. So if you're not in Patreon and um, you can join now, you can uh, always get the templates in the coffee shop. Okay. Your niece is having 19th birthday on St. Patrick's Day, but I haven't been doing good on decorating. Don't, please tell me, is her birthday on St. Patrick's Day as well? 19th birthday. That's exciting. Oh, you're doing amazing. Don't be so hard on yourself. This is exciting. Thank you for sharing that. No plan for Easter besides eating a lot of candy and then after Easter complain about it. We all do that. Don't worry. We all do that. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's paint this um, candle stick. So um, I already started one. You can see it's very dark gold. It's not very lustrous, and it's not what I would prefer. But I think for certain projects, it um, it will work. It's more. I think it has a more like a vintage look. So definitely, it has a, a room in the decorating um, world. But um, I was hoping for something slightly different. What color pink is the garland? So the garland, um, the garland I did, I will show you in a second because I have them here. And this is how you can remove them, but we will do some of these steps here as well. So I just wanted you to see, these are fairly easy to remove. Uh, they are very, very small, as you can see. I always recommend to make more transfers than you actually need. So you have some extras if, in case there is some breakage. Before you remove them, make sure that you let them dry completely, okay? That is very important so you don't uh, mess with them when they're drying. Sometimes I do that if I'm in a rush and um, it's not always a good idea. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, let me bring up my, my screen really quickly because we are done with the transfers so I can show you. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, so here is the pink, uh, here, I mean, here are the cupcakes, and these are fully dry. Now, if I was to demonstrate how to do the swirl, this is my, the, oh, no, this is the wrong icing. I use um, thick icing, and basically all you do is, right, if you watch the video, your icing for the swirl, I recommend that it's thicker, and it's very, very fast then. And then you have to let that dry. And once they're dry, like you saw, it's super easy to remove, okay? Super duper fun. And I love the cupcake transfers. Now let me bring these in. So these are, um, <clears throat> see, I kept this yellow because I ended up really not being a fan of this gold. So I just kept it yellow. And there is an image of it that you, you see the flame, but the flame you will be adding after once you place your candlestick on the, the cookie. The flame is added after. And you were asking about this lovely pink. So this is a deep pink by Emery Color Brand. It's straight from a bottle, nothing too um, um, complicated. So it's a deep pink from Emery Color Brand, okay? And if you want to see, you can just remove these like that. And then also these, let's remove them all, all right. And now uh, here comes the fun part. We're going to do a few more videos that I want to show you how to flood the cookies using um, just wet on wet technique, creating a sprinkle pattern on your uh, cookie, which is very kind of like celebratory and reminds me of uh, birthdays. So let's switch the camera here. Oh, it's no. <laughs> it's been two weeks, so I lost uh, my touch. Uh, what am I doing? All right, remove this. Okay. And now let's bring this. All right. So this is a large cookie. Remember I showed you in the beginning that I uh, built with uh, basically three round cookies, this uh, nice shape. And I'm using 15, you can use 10 to 15, but preferably 15 second consistency icing so it doesn't uh, kind of uh, fall off the cookie. Um, if it's too runny, it tends to fall off the, the cookie and um, it's, it's, it's a mess. 
Now I'm gonna squeeze my piping bag a little more. You see more icing is coming out. I'm coming around the edge first and then filling in the center. And we're gonna be using wet on wet technique. What it means that I will be depositing um, contrasting color of icing onto my wet base. And I will be using uh, yellow, teal, and pink. Okay, so yellow, teal, and pink. And those three colors should be the same consistency um, as my white icing or your white icing, or they could be they could be slightly thinner, but I wouldn't go too too thin because then you could uh, introduce uh, you could develop your icing could develop cratering craters. So about the same consistency. And when doing these wet on wet uh, straight lines, I suggest making your opening on your piping bag fairly small because remember it's going to sink into that base layer, and with that it's going to spread a little bit. So if your opening is too big. I mean, unless you prefer uh, large sprinkles, then obviously go for it. But if you prefer um, kind of like a um, regular size sprinkle, sprinkle or a jimmy, I should say these are jimmies. So I'm starting with pink. Thank you, Sally. Thank you so much. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go uh, across the whole cookie, adding um, pink here and there. I'm not really um i don't really have a plan where i'm like i didn't plan on on the placement i just go with the flow and then we can switch i just want them to be somewhat evenly spaced out right and then we can switch the color and again this is uh this is the real speed that i'm working at now i'm working with this lovely yellow and clearly you can use other colors i will show you i have uh, two, I have two color palettes that I prepared using the same, um, same, basically same design. So if maybe you're making this for um, a friend who loves pink, you could just use different um, pink tints or pink. You can uh, make white base and then maybe use three different shades of pink. That would be also nice. And now to add some contrast, I'm going to come in with teal. And I'm using straight from a bottle teal. Again, uh, the colors I'm using, uh, the icing I'm using was mixed uh, with um, Emery Color brand food colorings. And these are concentrated gel food colors. Many of you are aware of these, but if you are new to cookie decorating, there is such a uh, myriad of food colors now available. So I, I like to use Emery Color brand, Chef Master, uh, some of the Wilton I like also and the brown gel. So there is, I mean, every food food uh, color brand has uh, has a co color that um, um, stands out from other other brands. All right, so that was the, the base. Yes, I thought also that this, these are the perfect party colors. That was my, my thinking as well. Now, another design I wanna show you before we finish, um, before we finish, um, with with all the details and I will share those. Uh, hopefully we have enough time. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna run out of time. So this design, it's uh, also for birthday and you can see I'm leaving a bit of a border um, between the edge and uh, the edge of the icing, edge of the cookie and edge of the icing. This is to accommodate the beaded border that I will be adding later. Now this is optional, but I really like the, the way it looks with the beaded border. Thank you, thank you so much, Caroline. So, and again, we're gonna be doing wet on wet. And for this, um, we're going to use white and also that lovely deep pink that I made with deep pink emery color brand. What size round it is? Okay, so you are, you are asking all the right questions. So this is two inches and a quarter. And I know because I have it in front of me, so I just, I, I don't know, lucky me, I have, I have a ruler here. So two and a quarter. So it's not a very large cookie. You can obviously make these larger if you want to. And now um, wet on wet, so I dropped large um, white dots and now we're gonna shape it. Every time you run your uh, scribe tool through that um, white, you want to wipe the tip of the scribe so you don't accidentally transfer that teal color in the middle of your star. All right, and this is not done. I'm gonna come in with um, 
this deep pink, just to brighten things up a little bit. Thank you, Sally. So I'm adding these random dots. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. Yes, yes, Margaret. Margaret, that's that's uh, that's correct. I um, it's best to use the same consistency, and um, obviously, wet on men, wet means that you are you adding wet icing onto the wet icing, and the idea is that the icing you adding onto your wet base, and its icing is going to sink in to that base, so you will have a seamless layer. All right. So now uh, I think we can bring on my camera. All right, little dance. All right, so now I've got my, I'm gonna show you. So you see two, these are two, these are the, this is the same design and I use just different colors. And this one, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty similar to the one on the bottom, but just um, different um, order, I would say. So the background is lighter. All right, so now let's move on, and I'm going to just show you quickly. Those of you who don't have food, uh, food projector, um, who don't have a projector to project images and writings on your cookies, and I don't have one either, so and it's okay, I'm still here. Um, so you can also use a tissue paper method to write on cookies, or you can um, use your scribe and just scratch gently the surface of your cookie and write uh, that way. Or I often also create a template. So um, so my writing would be in the same, let's say if I want it to be centered, sometimes I struggle with this also, or if I, if I want this to be really straight, I don't want it to be, you know, crooked. I will create a cardstock template. I will cut out the exact size of the um, square that should uh, show the writing. And then I will place it on top of the cookie and then I'll just um, use icing and write. But in this case, we're going to use a tissue paper method. So um, I already did my writing. This is just handwritten. You can print something like this if you want, but this is just for the illustration for the for the demo. So you can see you don't need any special high tech tool to um, to do this. So now this is a tissue paper, but I don't mean a tissue paper you blow your nose in. This is a uh, packaging. Um, tissue paper for your for if you're packaging a gift or something like that. I don't know if you can see clearly, but now I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm gonna go over. And what's gonna happen? I need to switch a marker. I need to get this one. I'm switching the marker because the tip of that marker I was using was already uh, a bit. You see the difference? It was a bit too. Um, soft and what's going to happen we're going to put this on top of the icing now in for this technique to to work your icing needs to be fully dry and we're going to basically trace over with edible marker now those of you who are not opposed to using um, um, uh, um, carbon copy method. You can also use non-toxic marker, and all you need to do is write uh, with non-toxic marker, but make sure that you write it uh, as an a mirrored image. So then, when you turn it, you will go over it, and it will transfer on your icing. Okay. So now we're just going to. Well, I said, and this is not a big deal. So um, I'm going to have my candle, or we can put candle, or you can decide. You can let me know, okay? Before I move on, you can let me know which of these I like. The let's do let's do the blue. So let me know which one you would like me to put in on there. Um, do you want me to put three three blue candles, or um, yellow, or cake, or a cupcake here? Okay, let me know in the comment section while I'm working on this. All right, can you guys see okay? All right. So now keep in mind that you need to hold this with your hand, but like don't put excessive pressure on your cookie, obviously. And like I mentioned before, your icing needs to be fully dry. So now we're just gonna go over. And what's going to happen, the ink from the marker, it's going, it's, I can see it, it's seeping through the tissue paper and it's going to leave a clear guide for me to pipe. All 
you don't want to rush this process. You want to do it kind of, I, I mean, you don't have to take too much time, but for the ink to seep through, you have to go over it. Okay, now let's see. That's all the breath. Okay, it's there. I don't know if you can see it, but I can, I can see it. It's not um, like a perfect, perfect outline or like a, but you can see make a wish, right? All right, so that's what we want. And I still don't see any suggestions. Okay, so you leave it, you are leaving it up to me. So um, let's do a cupcake then. All right, but first let's do the writing. So for the writing, I've got my, um, I've got my piping bag fitted with a um, yellow cake. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a yellow cake since you mentioned yellow cake. I've got my piping bag filled uh, with black icing and this is a PME 1.5. Oh, you're all mesmerized. Oh, thank you, June, that is so sweet. I was wondering why everybody is so quiet. Because here it's like you can hear the crickets. It's so, so quiet. So, um, yeah, thank you. All right. So uh, this is black icing. And to make black icing, I highly recommend that you make it ahead of time. And so when I say ahead of time, I mean you could do this um, a night before or a few days before, just so the icing deepens over time and you don't have to use as as much food coloring. The cupcake is so cute. Thank you. Okay, so maybe I'll use the cupcake if we have time on the round cookie. So I'm going to be using yellow cake and the cupcake. All right, so now let's see if we can do this. <laughs> okay, I think I'm a bit overexposed here. All right, so. I'm just gonna turn here a little bit, sorry, so I can be a bit closer here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with M. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Perfection is overrated. It's, it's actually a trap. It makes you think that nothing you make is perfect. No. <laughs> Everything you make is perfect, but you know what I mean. We often judge ourselves. We are the worst, our own worst critics. Oh, there is a bubble. As I'm coming towards the, the end, when I'm when I'm finishing the line, I um, I stop squeezing. I stop I stop I stop squeezing. Okay, and I just I'm trying to uh, just lay the line on the icing. Oh, you are cleaning out the freezer. Um, I have I have time tomorrow. You can come tomorrow, Laurel. <laughs> we we need to. I have to clean our, oh my goodness, yeah, you just reminded me. Ah, oh, it's always something. So good luck with the cleaning out the freezer. It will be amazing once, once it's done. I know it's a pain, but once it's done, it's amazing to have a clean freezer. And know where everything is. You don't have to second guess yourself when you're shopping. Do I have this? Do I have that? Oh, there is a, uh, I, can, I can feel, there is a joys of powdered sugar here. I can't get over it. Okay, we'll survive. So there was a bit of a clog, and um, the problem with the powdered sugar is that no matter what brand I get, and even like the high quality, it still ends up having um, lumps.
All right. Um, now we're going to we're gonna do, and this is gonna be really fun. Um, I need a fine tip edible marker. If I can find one, here it is. And this is the cake. So we're gonna place the cake on here, okay? And we're gonna be adding candles here. So let's do, uh, let's see how many candles we're gonna add. So I want to make sure that it's not too, too high up there. And then, not too, okay, so if we do this, we have to add candles. So I'm gonna see, let's one candle, two, three, four, so let's say five candles, or maybe just three in the middle, maybe just three. And then um, I'm gonna do the candle wick with black marker. Now I scratched the surface, but I don't know if you can see that. Okay. I agree with you, uh, we all want it perfect, but sometimes things happen. Yes, I mean, but the, yeah, the perfection is really, it, it's overrated. If you are gonna wait for everything to be perfect, um, just maybe start with a project. If you want everything to be perfect, you will never, or maybe you don't have all the tools, you will never, you will never kind of get anywhere. I think being consistent, it's better than being perfect. And just be, you know, be, be authentic. So uh, I don't know if I can see without my glasses, but okay, I'm gonna try. So what I'm gonna do, uh, so imagine, so the candle may be uh, this here. So I'm just going to do a line here. Let's do three candles instead of four or uh, five. I mean, that might be a little too, too much. Okay, and another here. So this is the candle wig. I know it looks odd at this time, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So now I'm gonna come in with blue icing. I'm gonna push this down a little bit and we're going to do the candle, okay? Yes, enjoy the perfection, uh, enjoy the prog progress. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> enjoy that. I completely agree. Let me, let me highlight this comment. Yes. So uh, let's, let's uh, do first candle. So just lay your icing on there. Come all the way to the black line that we made with edible marker, but don't cover it, okay? All right, so that's the candle. And, oh, you're so sweet, Byron, thank you. Mwah. This is, thank you so much. How is cold Wisconsin treating you? I hope it's not too bad. All right, so now um, I'm gonna do uh, the flame and the flame I'm gonna be um, making with yellow. So I'm just gonna cut a small opening on my piping bag. I just prepared this a minute ago. Okay. And again, do not cover the wick. You want the wick to be visible. So that's that black line. Oh, this is when you are aging. This is um, not a good, um, good moment. When you can see very well. Okay. All right, let's have it. All right, so that, that's the flame, basically a little teardrop shape. Now I'm going to pipe a little of this yellow icing on the back, just a little bit. I don't want to add too much. I don't want the icing to ooze out from underneath. All right, so. Now we're going to place it here. And there. I have to use readers. Oh, yeah. I just had my eyes checked a couple months ago, and they said I'm, I'm, I'm on the way to the reading glasses, but I'm not there yet. So it's like, OK, you that wasn't helpful because <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I can see very well and sometimes uh, it's not um, working. All right, so the same idea, same idea with the cupcake. If you were to do the candles, oh, I just broke one. Oh, oh, oh. If you were to do the candles, uh, you can actually save this one. Uh, you see, I broke it because I wasn't careful. You could save it, you could glue it on and then maybe uh, pipe the stripe across so you don't see the, the broken end. Okay, so, so we're gonna be do the, doing the cupcake and the idea is the, pretty much the same. So we need to make the candle and then 
to the wick and the flame. So let's see the candle here. And here I think you'll be able to see the line better than on the white icing. You see the line, so the scratched line, that's where I want to. Thank you, June, and thank you, Charlene. So, um, all right, so let's do the wick first. So I'm using, this is a fine tip edible marker, and this is a dual marker. There are uh, many of similar markers on the market nowadays. This is a brand that um, I started with, Rainbow Dust. They do have different colors. Black is probably my most used color, and that's what I use. Um, I am going to use blue for the, because that's the only color. I have yellow, but I'm not uh, fond of the yellow as the candle for this. So I'm just going to use, and I don't have the right consistency as well. So I'm just going to use the blue, blue candle for this as well. So let's uh, come up uh, to the bottom of the wick. And then just going to use blue here. Uh, okay, let's not do that. Um, I'm switching to white because although my, my white icing on my cupcake, it's the, the swirl, it's, it's pretty thick, but um, I would be slightly concerned if I put dark icing here on this uh, side, and then as it's drying, if the icing is too dark, it may seep through the white. It's not 100%, but, but it is possible. And I always use a little bit of a, like a shifting motion, and now we can do the um, flame. So for the flame, just adding a dot and then moving up. Okay. And oops. And if we have to move, if you, you want to shape it, you can shape it a little bit. All right. And now you can make a wish. Now the last, very last thing is the beaded border. Hello, Joseph. Long time no see. How is it going? How are you? I hope everything is going well. And before we do the last bit, I also wanted to share something with you. So let me remove this. And let's have a little icing break. All right. And so the things I wanted to share with you, lovely ladies, Colleen, Darlene, and also Linda, send me the, the pictures of their cookies. So I'm going to go ahead, start with Colleen. I'm so grateful that you are guys um, following along and uh, decorating and sending me the, the images. It just makes my day every time I see something you created. So I assume these are for Valentine's Day, I believe. I don't know if Colleen is watching, but um, I found these today, but I think you sent these um, earlier this month and I uh, wasn't um, able to check my email there. And also these, I love the, the heart turned upside down and she turned it into a puppy. How adorable. And these as well. And wet on wet lips. Beautiful work. And Darlene, uh, she made all the... Oh, do I have... Mm, I think I'm going to have to... Uh, because you sent me three images, right? And I only have... So this is a... Um, Darlene is a member of Patreon group. And so she, she created all the tutorials from this past month. For this tutorial, if you remember... Um, this was this design with a heart, but Darlene used, a, uh, used her own oops, different shape. She used the plaque, and I love that. I love that you are using your own colors and also shapes and adding uh, your uh, own touches to these designs. Beautiful work. And Darlene also uh, made um, the jewelry box. Remember jewelry box? And I just love how you did it. I love the colors. So thank you for sending me the pictures. I have to upload the, the last picture because you also sent me the envelopes and I don't have it here. So I will share that next week. And I love the gold that you use. You mentioned that in your email, well, it was, uh, sorry, it was gold poppy or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, I don't have the remaining images here, unfortunately. That's one missing, that's the envelope. Beautiful work and thank you for sending these. And also Linda, Linda is ahead of me way ahead of me, Linda has started on Easter. And this is the very classic Easter bunny uh, cookie uh, shape. And uh, I just love this little guy. 
I can't wait to, hopefully I will have some time to do some Easter, Easter cookies. Um, let me know if you would like that during the live stream. Maybe uh, one Wednesday I can uh, focus on Easter. So let me know. Thank you, Joseph. I'm so glad to hear that you've been doing well. All right, so let's finish with, with this design. Again, thank you for sending the images. And if you'd like to share your work, don't hesitate to reach out. You can um, send these via email or uh, send them via Instagram, but I do prefer email. It's just easier for me to um, to work with images that way. Okay, so I will bring up my screen here. All right. All right, so now we're just gonna finish this. And um, in ideal world, I think I would have liked to uh, use pink, but my pink is out of reach at this moment. So I'm gonna be using blue. And I've got my bag fitted with number oh, PME 1.5, but for this beaded border, you could use number two. Thank you, Sally. So now we're just going to add beaded border. Basically, I'm going to go around. And you see, you could use larger, larger uh, round piping tip for this or use, um, I would have liked to use pink. There's one thing that I, I forgot, but it's okay. They don't all have to be same. So this is a similar, uh, similar. well, basically the same design, but different colors. Um, here you can see there's a splatter on the icing and the splatter was created with gold luster dust. What I did, I dipped my paintbrush in the gold luster dust paint. And then before I added the cupcake, I just did this. I just ran the tip of the scribe tool through the bristles and that created that nice splatter, okay? If you wanted to do that, you can also do that. So, um, oh, and the very last thing, I almost forgot. We are almost there. Um, let me remove this screen and then bring on this file here and this one. So, and then the very last thing, I decided to add this um, outline and then I uh, used um, white sanding sugar to kind of, like create a, this lovely frame for, for this design. This is optional, but I wanted to use sanding sugar. I just love how it sparkles and I don't use it enough. And for this I'm using, this is a, like a piping, a soft piping consistency around there. Um, and we want to do, you want to do this right after you create this outline. Otherwise the sanding sugar is not going to, it's going to stick. And also your uh, design on the top should be dry, like your lettering and all the other things you did should be fully dry. So I'm just placing it on my bead tray 
and then we can pour some white sanding sugar on top. All right, so let me, I'm just going to gather these here. All right, so let's remove this screen and let me bring up my screen one more time here so you guys can see what we did today. So here, um, are the cookies we made to today. Um, I don't know if you can see, let me back up a little bit. You can see, all right. So thank you for being here. Um, if you are just joining in, if you missed the live stream, no worries. There is always um, a replay that is available after the live stream um, is uh, finished with. And it is available in the playlist on YouTube and also on Facebook, although this live stream is not going to be on Facebook because there was a technical issue there. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining me today. And as a reminder, you can support live stream by sign up, signing up for the newsletter. Link for that is in the PDF for today's live stream available in a coffee shop. You can also join Haniela's Cookie Club on Patreon. There are different tiers there, and I uh, <clears throat> I share exclusive tutorials there, and also um, you get access to templates. You can also join Coffee Live Stream membership and also YouTube membership or shop templates and recipes. I will see you next week, our usual time, 1 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube and hopefully also on Facebook. Until then, have a great week and happy birthday, Margaret. Bye, everyone.